I'm the boss, I know how it should be, and you have to get there. What stops an actor from sharing themselves and their work? Uh, trust. If they don't trust the director, if they don't trust their fellow actors, if they don't feel safe, they will tighten up, tense up. Um, so whether I'm on set or in class, it's just building that trust, making them feel uh, that it's a safe space for them to open up and try things. Um, I think that's the most important thing that I do as a director, as an acting teacher, is creating that space where everybody can relax and play and find different things and try different things. What if they don't trust themselves? Can you see that versus they don't trust others? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can see them editing themselves, you can see them being self-conscious, but I, I think again that comes back to creating that, that safe space where you're encouraging them, um, not like picking out negative things that they're doing, but, but coming at it from a more supportive, encouraging, positive uh, place and making you know actors are really sensitive creatures you know so and i know having come from acting that one little note can really get in your head and throw you off you know i have to always keep myself from giving a good note too because sometimes that'll throw them off if you say like oh i love that moment do that in the next take i love that moment where you guys said that thing and you know and then the next take you can see them in their head sort of like oh here comes the moment that he loved and it will never be as good you know so i have to that's the thing i have to constantly keep myself from doing is like being supportive and acting like i like what's going on but not being so specific that i get in their heads you, know? you say let actors play mm. can you tell us what this means yeah to try different ways of saying something, to tr try a improvised line of dialogue, to maybe take a pause before that moment, to, to connect to their scene partner, to, to just keep, keep exploring it so that I'm not getting like six takes that are all in the same sort of place, you know, that if it's a angry line, maybe don't say it angry. Maybe you know, say, laugh on one take. Try, keep trying stuff, you know. So that's what I mean by play. Was being given freedom important to you when you were taking classes, let's say in New York City in the beginning? Do yeah. you remember teachers that you felt maybe were more controlling versus ones that really let you do your thing and you knew that's what worked? Yeah, I think there's a whole sort of history of uh, coming back to the, to the method uh, book that I love so much, the Isaac Butler book, but like, you know, Lee Strasberg and that of berating people. And I think that's a long history with acting teachers of that sort of yelling at people and never acting like anything is any good. Um, so I, I sort of work against that. Um, I don't think that creates an environment where people want to play and try things if they're constantly getting berated. Um, so I think, you know, you don't want to just say everything's great. And so you want to try and um, be constructive with your criticism, but just not in a way that's too berating or negative. Yeah, that brings to the mind an article I saw, I think Wall Street Journal, can a boss be good if they yell? Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if the same is for a director, because I was thinking about it, if the boss is then fair at other times, I think you would almost respect them in some sense. Yeah. Versus a, a boss that maybe doesn't yell, but then there's like other stuff that's not. I mean, that's interesting. Could it, can a director be good if they yell? Uh, sure. I mean, Lee Strasberg was an amazing teacher, you know, even though he yelled at people. Um, so I think you can be. I think for me, it's getting out of that mindset that a director is the boss. You know, it's, it's um, I think there's a lot of ego in directing and teaching and being, you know, being in that position, the ego can go wild with that. So I think you have to constantly work against that and be a collaborator. And 
I don't want to direct unless I have to. If it's going off the rails, I'll give you a note. But if I can just cast really great actors and let them do their thing, great. I don't need to micromanage and direct all the time, you know. Do you think, though, we need to know who to respect? You know, sometimes you have to, what's the saying, you have to meet people at their own level sometimes to have them respect you. Do, do, you, do you think we need to sometimes see that person take ownership of the ship? Yeah, but I think that's about, I think you see that in their, what they want and how they communicate. And I don't think that has to be, I don't think respect comes from yelling at somebody or berating someone. I think, I think, you know, you can be respected and be positive and supportive and be collaborative. And um, I think just a lot of times, probably because of that, like wanting respect, I think directors tend to direct too much. And it's, you know, I think it's in, in all aspects of the business, you know, actors love to act and act too much, you know. So I think it's, you have to take your ego out of it and just really focus on the work. And the people that I've worked with that do that, those are the people that I respect. Um, I love when someone says, I don't know. I don't know what this moment should be. Let's, let's figure it out together. I don't think... Um, I don't disrespect them for that. I think that means that they're still exploring the moment. They're trying to figure it out with the actors. They're letting something be alive. And I respect that rather than uh, somebody who's going to pretend they know the answers all the time. What if an actor can't find the character within them? Um... That's a tough one. I mean, if it's in, are you talking about like in a set or in a class or, cause I think that's. Okay. I mean, I guess I'm thinking of maybe really both. Anytime yeah. they're supposed to play something and it just, it's just not giving, it's not coming for you. Yeah. I mean, that's why I would, I would never direct something that I didn't get to cast. Cause I think casting is everything in directing. So, um, I've had the luxury of working with amazing actors, um, so I haven't had that problem on a set. Uh, in a class, it's different because you're getting you know, new people all the time and people are at different levels of experience. Um, I think there's always a version of the character that they can find, and it's a version, their version of the character. Um, so it's not necessarily like, this is the character and you have to like go to the character and become this thing. It's sort of, bringing those two things together. Like, I want to see your version of this character um, more than like trying to hit some note. How do you know when to push an actor and when to leave an actor alone? Um, well, if they're not getting the, the scene or the, or the moment um, in the way that you see it, then it has to be a, a communication. But I think push is a tough word for me just because I think if you push too hard, you're not going to get what you want out of that actor. So I think it's really a delicate, you know, it's just a conversation about, you know, I like to ask questions a lot. Like, what do you think this moment is? What are you, what are you trying to do with this line? Like, what, what's your intention here? And Because um, I think sometimes if you push too much, you can push him away. So it's a, a pulling, sounds like. Yeah, it's more of just a conversation of just figuring it out together. Again, rather than it being like, I'm the boss, I know how it should be, and you have to get there. Rather letting it be a conversation of like, maybe it's that vision I had, but maybe it's something else. You know, I always come back to that, I love that line about, you know, you write one movie, you direct another movie, and you edit a third movie, you know, so it's, it, it's always got to be alive. And if you get too controlling and try to make it something that you wrote six months ago in the script, it's not going to be alive and it's not going to be compelling. You said you had side jobs as a waiter? Yeah. Did you work in some hectic kitchens? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about uh, yelling. And <laughs> acting teachers, yeah, chefs can be uh, similar. 
Well, I mean, there's an element of show. Yeah. You know, it's plate up time and yeah. it's dinner time and you've got, you know, patrons that are waiting. Yeah. And there's a stress. And so yeah. it's similar. Get out there. But you're right. That's a push. Yeah. That the And needs to be, obviously. But yeah. whereas you're talking about asking questions and pulling, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Just having a dialogue with an actor and talking about it. I mean, hopefully that can happen in rehearsal and you have enough time. I mean, sometimes when it gets really stressed and you're losing the light and you got to get the shot and you know, that's, that's a different story. But, um, but as much as I can keep it alive and exploring and finding things, um, you know, I think that's the atmosphere you want to create. I mean, so many film sets that I've been on, it's just like about like, okay, did we get it? Okay. Next thing. It's like, we're not being creative. We're not, you know, exploring things, we're just like getting the shot and moving on to the next thing. And it's like the, the idea is just to get the day. Um, but then what are you making?